Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on how to measure and improve your performance uh, of your HCX migrations. My name is Agnieszka Kozierowska. I work as Cloud Solutions Consultant in a Google Cloud VMware engine team. And as a part of my job, I support customers in migrating the data from on-premises to uh, Google Cloud VMware engine. And when I started my work on migrations, I looked into blogs and I looked for KB articles around performance. I was not able to find a lot of information. So I started gathering my own data that I want to show, share with you today. And this is the session is about, about migrations. So if you, a few words about me, I really like to share uh, what I learned about VMware stack and also about Google, Google Cloud VMware engine. And I share it officially, but also in a funny way when I blog. Uh, so today, uh, what we have on agenda, I would like to speak about HCX architecture a little bit, but I assume you already know HCX well and use it. I will talk about uplink benchmarking, about migration types and limitations, also about migrating large VMs and when to use one optimization. The session is very short. I hope you will find something, uh, something interesting also for you, but it's really, it's really difficult to, you know, talk a lot about Different all, all the problems because because of the time I will keep it short. But before I start, I just wanted to say that HCX is really very popular among the customers that migrate uh, they, uh, their workloads from on-premise to the cloud. Uh, why is that? It's because it's reliable, it's extremely efficient, and also what's important is to set up. Uh, I think if you are working with HCX, you recognize this uh, dashboard. This is HCX hybridity interface. And I had this internal joke that after every successful migration project, I used to uh, take a screenshot of, you know, the map uh, to sh that shows the, how VMs migrate from what, what kind of on-premise data to uh, data center to cloud to the cloud, and I was really jealous that you know during the lockdown VMs traveled around the world, but I couldn't. Okay, so about the setup, uh, I'm gonna I want to talk about and share with you is a basic setup, HX setup you can have in hybrid environment. So usually it's the same for every every cloud provider. You have everything set up for you in the cloud when you provide a VMware engine and you have HCX Manager and Interconnect Appliance. But what you need to do on-prem is to uh, configure and deploy HCX connector that will connect to HCX Manager. And also among of this, you are creating service mesh. Service mesh consists of many small appliances and one of the most important appliance, appliance is Interconnect Appliance. And among the most important link that Interconnect Appliance has is an uplink interface. And I'm gonna to focus today on this uplink interface only. And if you see this network architecture I'm sharing, uh, it's networking perspective. So it seems that to, for, for your migration to be successful, you need to have a really well set up networking and a really good pipe for you know, migrating your workloads. Usually customers use Interconnect or VPN, and then over this, they use HCX Service Mesh Interconnect uh, uh, connection and tunnel over UDP 4500 port. But the challenge is how to make it work and performant. It's easy to set it up, right? You just click next, next, finish, but then you need to think of, uh, you know, some potential issues that may affect your performance. One of it is MTU. If you take a look at the networking architecture and the elements that we have on the way between on-prem and cloud, usually on cloud side, everything is set. A cloud provider will configure HTX manager for you, will provide links, different uh, network for vMotions, different network for replication, for VM traffic. Everything is perfect. So if you ever want to have a reference, take a look at how it's configured on your cloud side. But on premise, if you take a look at, um, at this uh, picture, you'll see that we have not only H6 uh, interconnect appliance, but also, also ASX size, virtual distributed switches, uh, physical networking architecture. All of this need to be configured consistently uh, for you to work, to work uh, on your successful and you know, performant migrations. And there's also one thing, if you're using VPN, well, HCX also uses a kind of IPsec, so it's all VPN over VPN. So NTU is something you really need to focus on. I have a few steps that uh, and few advices that I would like to share with you. The first one is to check performance. How to do that? Where to begin? So when you configure HCX connector and also manager, uh, those two are supplied with a 
benchmarking tool called PerfTest. It's, I know it's only benchmark, it's Hyper 3, uh, it's single threaded, so maybe it will not uh, be a perfect solution, but it will give you an idea on what to expect when you migrate your virtual machines. To start your test, you need to SSH to and to connect appliance and just run a few comments, especially you need to select which appliance you want to test and run the perf test. Usually, I prefer to start with perf test uplink option. There are many options you can check, WAPFAN optimization, you can check IPsec tunnels performance, but I'm checking uplinks because this is what I mostly focus on during my migrations. There are also a few useful tags that you can use. For example, as I mentioned, MTU is something that has to work and has to be correctly for the better performance. So, so you, can, you can test it with option M, which will just you know, help you to select the right segment. And you can also, if you don't feel that you saturate your link, you can use P for more parallel, uh, for more streams. Right? You can also set the port you want to use. Uh, it will, it will, it's, it's easy because not always in the cloud, all the ports are open. And how the uplink test looks like, it's, it's, a, it's a really very simple output. You will get round trip time of your uh, uplink connection between interconnect on-prem and on a, on a cloud. And then you, you will see the bandwidth. This is what we should focus on, the bandwidth, right? This is how efficient our, our transmissions, our VM uh, uh, migration will be. So the perf test tries to send as much data as it can within the 60 seconds of time. You can, of course, change the time. And then you get results. Uh, you can also have uh, this uh, retransmit, which may indicate or not a problem. If you have a lot of retransmits, you need to take a look into, uh, into, into your network configuration. But usually, a small number of retransmits can happen. And so what else? Well, not only performance uh, can be verified, but also a networking issues. For example, here, uh, the um, IPERF test shows asymmetric routing, which means that in one direction, we can migrate fast. And when we want to migrate back, it may take longer. So this is also where you can, uh, this is also the thing you can identify when you're measuring the performance. And of course, fragmentation issues. One of the most important case and issue you can have is fragmentation when you focus on performance. So perf test is something you have to start with, right? And one thing to avoid fragmentations and then the other issues, because when you migrate to cloud, you don't actually know what exactly what exact settings may be on the cloud. You don't, may not know what to expect. But one thing has to has to be checked for sure: it's MTU sizes on both ends, so on interconnect and cloud uh, cloud vendor uh, on both sides. So MTU, you can check MTU in uh, your network profile, and it has to be the same. It has to match. Another thing that you need to focus on when you're thinking about migrating and the performance of your migration is to get to know the migrations type. We have a few options you can use. The most popular are two, vMotion and bulk. So vMotion, uh, it's just one transfer per your service mesh. So it can, you can only transfer one VM at a time with a certain bandwidth you have to provide. And you need to, uh, you need to also provide la latency lower than 100 milliseconds. So this is the first option, but this is zero downtime. Most interesting, most, I think, in, next to the motion, one of the most interesting uh, migration types is bulk migration. You can schedule it to fit in your main, to fit to your maintenance window. It allows you for 200 concurrent transfers. Unfortunately, there is a VM restart, but, uh, VM are not deleted on premise or uh, at on the source, right? So you have kind of resource uh, recycle bin. Mm, if you want to combine both of them, so be able to you know, uh, use uh, 200 concurrent transfers, but also zero downtime, you can use a, a replication assistant migration It's in the enterprise license. There's also an option for you when you create a service mesh uh, to use uh, van optimization, which is data duplication line conditioning. I will speak about it uh, later. And one of the options also, you can migrate not only from VMware, but also from a physical service, like you can install agent and on Windows and Linux and migrate to vSphere uh, to the cloud directly. And it's called OS assistant migration. And when I started working with migrations, uh, what, I, what, I, what I was thinking is that it's better maybe migrate one VM than a wave of VMs, right? A group of VMs. This is 
what I, I was thinking. But honestly, when I ran a lot of tests with the customers, uh, I found out that the, you shouldn't be afraid of migrating many VMs at the same time. So for example, uh, here I have the example number one, when I migrate 12 VMs, there are three terabytes VMs I use bulk migration. Uh, they all start at the same time, and the longest migration time was three hours, 49 minutes. And comparing the same conditions, um, number two is a one VM, 2.5 terabyte VM, and its migration took uh, almost six hours. Of course, it depends on VMs and, you know, uh, the condition and how much the VM produces the traffic, right? But uh, don't worry, and, you know, you can really trust bulk migration and use many. It will, the results will be really great. Uh, step four is identify busy VMs. When you migrate in waves, in bulk, there are some VMs that even if the initial synchronization is done, they are still replicating, waiting for the failover, uh, for, for, for the cutover window, right? So in this moment, what, uh, what it can happen is that this VM can affect others. And so what I like about HCX is it, that it will notify you. There's, there's gonna be an alert on uh, HCX dashboard that well, this VM is producing more than you know the, the pipe can handle. So uh, the best option would be to migrate this VM alone, right? If you can, if you take a look into app logs, you will see that it detects data churn and it's overshooting the available vMotion bandwidth. And the last thing that I also was surprised, you know, to learn is that you don't have to always use one optimization. One optimization, just inline reduction, it will help you with. Uh, when, when you are connecting your connector to uh, the cloud side via internet, when you have uh, latency, high latency on your on your on your link, and you know when when your bandwidth is saturated, but usually when you migrate to clouds, uh, your the, the bandwidth conditions are very good, so you're using low latency, high bandwidth, and uh, not necessarily you need to use one optimization, especially because it requires also a really good data store to run. Uh, on-prem and in the cloud. So on-prem, sometimes customers, they have problems to find a really good data store to handle on optimization. So these are these were like a, a few advices that I would give a person who, who starts working with migrations. And thank you for listening and I hope it will be helpful.